Here's a countdown of my top 10 storm chases of 2015. Junction 183, US 183, 331. My chase season got to a start in late April, and I found myself spending a lot of time in Texas, not only in April, but throughout the entire year. My number 10 storm chase was the third chase of the season and brought me to a busy, busy day in north central Texas. The first discrete supercell developed around 2 p.m. and I had a visual on a low rotating wall cloud. As I got closer, the rotation increased and the storm struggled to produce until it did drop a brief tornado that did not do any damage. Now the storm chase took a turn for the worst when I lost cell phone data and radar access for three hours I got to Dublin, Texas with reports of a large tornado in progress and very large hail. So I decided, you know what, let's rely on weather radio since I can't really see anything and get out of here. The tornado warning remains in effect until 5 p.m. for southern in Up County at 4.36 p.m. A large tornado was located just south of Dublin, moving east to 25 miles per hour. This is a particularly dangerous situation. Damaging tornado. Source, radar indicator rotation. In fact, you are in a life-threatening situation. The storm chase lasted well into the night. I got a glimpse of a couple of brief funnel clouds, and in addition to the earlier tornado, I did see a brief tornado actually touch down for a little while here. But the biggest story with this storm system was that the cyclic supercell was dropping a bunch of tornadoes, at least 10 EF zeros that were to the area southwest of Fort Worth. So all in all, an exciting chase that did make my top 10 list. For my number nine storm chase of the season, let's fast forward to August. And this was my easternmost storm chase of the season. Interesting because it was very much a last minute decision to kind of rush northward. I left Atlanta and got to my target near the Ohio-Indiana border just in time for a pair of semi-discreet quasi-supercell structures that were developing near Fort Wayne. Now these storms didn't have a lot of rotation at first, but it gave me a chance to kind of scope out the area. And Northwestern Ohio, two things, reminds me of Iowa. And it's also a great road network for storm chasing. So combine that with great visibility and it's a, a pretty good area to go storm chasing. Now with this storm chase, I did notice a low rotating wall cloud was organizing here. And as it was lowering, I got my camera out really quickly and snapped off one of my favorite pictures of the entire season, a mini low rotating wall cloud that dropped very close to the ground. Now, it wasn't like this for very long, but it did give me one of my favorite pictures of the entire season. So considering all the photographs I got and that this was a very low end storm chase day, I would say yes, it was successful and it ranks number nine on my list. For the number eight storm chase of 2015, let's go up to the Black Hills of South Dakota. And for reasons I'll explain later on, I had to start this day in Albuquerque, New Mexico and drive all day nonstop getting to South Dakota just in time for this massive, nearly stationary, pretty good looking supercell on radar. And not only that, but storm chasers were getting some outstanding photographs. In the end, this storm did not produce a tornado. It looked like it wanted to, but it did not. Maybe the low-level shear wasn't strong enough. But anyway, I decided to go west into the Black Hills and get a closer look. And despite all the trees, I did have a few glimpses like this of a large rotating mesocyclone. A pretty, pretty neat sight to see out here in the wilderness of the Black Hills of western South Dakota. But the backstory as to why I had started the day in New Mexico goes like this. So every spring, I go on this road trip, storm chase trip with a friend, usually in late May. In 2015, our first couple of days brought us to Colorado for what ended up being two busted storm chases. And on the second storm chase, we were in Southern Colorado and decided to just go on a road trip. And we just drove into New Mexico and eventually hit the Grand Canyon, Las Vegas, Southern California. But in the process, we ended up missing on a string of actually what ended up being some good chase days, including the Canadian Texas tornado. But in the end, as soon as the trip was over, I got back on the road and I went to the Black Hills for what ended up being my number eight storm chase of 2015. Number seven on this list was a storm chase near the Kansas City metropolitan area on July 1st. And this was literally three days after I had chased tornadic supercells near St. Louis, Missouri. Now I found myself chasing tornadic supercells near Kansas City, Missouri. So metropolitan chases in cities are not my favorite. It, it was very difficult here because I was fighting with traffic and I was fighting with, well, traffic was the biggest obstacle, but then residential areas, I had trees that were blocking view, buildings. It was tough getting around. But when I finally got to a field and saw that this tornado warned storm was really ramping up, I just set my camera up and hoped for the best. This is a sped up time lapse so you can see the rotation and if you look closely you can make out what appears to be either a funnel cloud or a tornado. 
I'll zoom in here a little bit. And if you're wondering what the noise is, is in the background, they had tornado sirens that were going off and on. So they were working correctly, and they were actually timed very closely to when the tornado, that at least I was close to, touched down. So the radar here shows the Lee Summit tornado, approximate time of the video and approximate time of the touchdown. If I zoom in a little bit and put an arrow, you get a good idea of where this partially obscured rain wrap tornado is. And at least, unless you were really up close, it was tough to see tornadoes this day. Some chasers got in a great position, but as far as I'm concerned, I still got some decent footage and was able to chase a metro area and not get myself into too much of a mess. The number six storm chase of 2015 is what I like to call nature's fireworks on July 4th, and this was in South Central South Dakota, a very isolated portion of the state. I did not see any storm chasers on this day and didn't see very many vehicles drive by either, but this isolated supercell was becoming better organized. It had a tornado warning for quite a while, but there wasn't the best radar sampling. If you look closely, there's some scuddy appendages, some clear inflow. Maybe you could consider a few of these structures kind of like a funnel cloud, but the point was is that there was nothing conclusive with this storm, definitely no tornado, but I let it run its course and I eventually backed off a little bit to get some pictures from the west. At this point the storm was maturing and there was some large hail, some large to, I believe there were a few reports of very large hail with this storm, so I just kept it at a distance. That was one of my iconic photographs of the year, kind of capturing the rainbow with the storm structure. And I'll zoom in here slowly on this video. And there was, like I said, there was hail with this storm. And you get hints of either a hail-cooled downdraft or a rain-cooled downdraft. Some gusts of wind kind of shot down with this storm, just showing the force of it. But I got to just take a lot of pictures and kind of just watch this storm unfold. Very, very good visibility in this area. And South Dakota has been a great state for me in terms of storm chases. I've had a lot of variety. I've had tornadoes. I've had great sunsets, like what I'll show here coming up. I've had super south thunderstorms. So all in all, this was, again, one of my top chases of the year. The number five storm chase of 2015 is Panhandle Magic, or what would later have to be called Panhandle Magic Part 1 on September 20th, one of my last chases of the season. But I was ecstatic because I drove nonstop overnight from Atlanta, 15 hours to get to Texas just in time on this marginal risk day for a lone supercell in the Texas Panhandle. Definitely some Panhandle Magic, but I got to chase this storm for over four hours with great visibility. The storm structure kept evolving until just it just kept taking on different characters and it was very photogenic. Definitely one of my one of my top chases of all time. Even though this storm did not produce a tornado, this was a nice nice shot here near an abandoned ranch. But at this point, shortly before this photograph, she lightning struck and caused a minor brush fire, but luckily the rain put it out a short time later. Here's a great sunset and as the storm was beginning to fade a little bit into sunset, I got to set up next to a rest stop and kind of just watch this thing spin out. And this was voted as my best photograph of the year from you guys on Twitter, so thanks for the votes. But this is a time lapse sped up approximately 20 times the actual speed, and you can see the storm rotating. There was a very short period of time that this storm looked like it might produce a tornado, but again, a storm does not have to produce a tornado to be an excellent storm chase, and this was one of my favorites. And you'll miss it here, but there's one frame. I was recording at 30 frames per second, but there was one frame where lightning touched down very close to me, and I got out of there a short time later. But a good example of true panhandle magic. After nearly two months of no storm chasing, I found myself right back in the panhandle in nearly the same exact town that I had finished the previous storm chase. So this is Panhandle Magic Part 2, the 50th storm chase of 2015. This was leading up to be a pretty big event for November 16th, 2015, nearly two years after the big November outbreak in the Midwest in 2013. But the problem here was that it would be a race toward the clock, as all indications were showing a night nighttime event with possibly a few discrete supercells shortly before sunset. I did get on one of those supercells that was showing a low, scuddy wall cloud here, but it really struggled to show the low-level rotation at first. I did get some great photographs here. Here's one of the... This is, I guess you could call it a quasi-wall cloud that was near the ground. A little bit further north, this storm did produce a couple of brief funnel clouds, and then fast forward even a little bit further ahead, it did drop a brief tornado to the south of Claude. But it wasn't until shortly after sunset that things went nuts. I found myself on Interstate 40 going eastbound, looking towards my north, and I thought I saw a rain shaft out of the corner of my eye. But I, look, I looked again, and there was actually a large tornado in progress. This is a few minutes after I had first seen it, but... This would be the first of many long track strong tornadoes. At one point, as I was moving north towards Pampa, I had a visual on two tornadoes on the horizon, but 
Minutes later, I came down a hill and there were power lines down and debris everywhere and I, I couldn't avoid it. There were cars pulled over everywhere. I actually ran over power lines, busted up my rim, had a tire that was losing air, but luckily three guys came over and helped me with a hammer and we hammered the rim back into place and I got out of there. But this was a wild chase. Three tornadoes, the most I had seen in any single storm chase dating back to June 17th of 2014. The number three storm chase of my 2015 chase season goes to Tail End Charlie on June 5th in western Kansas. I actually spent the bulk of the day in eastern Colorado where even though there were tornadoes all over the place, I could not find one. And there were a variety of reasons including poor cell service, a road network that was featuring a lot of dirt roads where I couldn't catch up to these storms fast enough. They were high precipitation cells too, so there were muddy roads, just a whole mess. And these storms merged into a line, and I decided to head east and maybe get ahead of this line into Kansas. And as soon as I got into Kansas, I noticed that a tail end Charlie setup might be unfolding. And as soon as I turned south here, there was a tornado warning, and I got to Winona just as a tornado was developing. And I was on this tornadic tail end Charlie cell for quite a while. From my vantage point, it was producing a tornado off and on, or at least was visible off and on for about a half hour or so. A great end to a storm chase that, after spending about five hours in Colorado and missing out on so many tornadoes, it really made a great end to this chase, and that's why this storm chase ranks as my third best chase of 2015. The number two storm chase of 2015 was in Tipton, Oklahoma on May 16th, and this was good old lucky number 13, the 13th chase of the season. And I was approaching a tornadic, dangerous supercell, and you can see the strong inflow literally sucking dust out of here, so I had to drop south to get into safe position. If you take a step back, you can see a classic beaver tail presentation with a mesocyclone, and radar showed a strong signal of a significant tornado in progress. So I had to drop south to get into a safe spot. Otherwise, I would have been in the direct path of this damaging tornado. And here's a photograph that is edited slightly to just kind of increase the contrast. But the video shows you that you can barely see this destructive tornado that's becoming rain wrapped. Now I did try to go east to stay with this storm, but the muddy road was washed out. I had to turn around, nearly got stuck, had a stray hailstone smash my windshield, but the consolation prize was just before sunset, another photogenic supercell here near Wichita Falls, Texas. But the story of this storm chase was really that destructive tornado that ripped through the town of Tipton, Oklahoma. And the pick for my number one storm chase of 2015 goes to South Central Kansas on May 6th, during what was a severe weather outbreak across the southern to central plains. My target during this chase was Wichita, and I only had to go about a half hour northwest of the city before I encountered a rapidly organizing discrete supercell. So I got into position, turned the camera on, and as soon as I could see a tornado, it was chase on. And this supercell was explosive into the sky. From my vantage point, what made this very unique and photogenic is that I could see a rainbow for nearly the entire length of this storm chase. Now I got closer to the tornado as if it was beginning to cross over US Route 50, visibly churning up some dust and debris. I stopped to try to get a few photos here, but it was a very low contrast at this point. This storm was an EF3 tornado that tracked for over 16 miles and was in progress for about 28 minutes, and I essentially tracked it the entire time. But as I said before, a low contrast storm, so I decided to get even closer and then turn north, which was probably the best decision of this chase. As I stayed with the tornado, even though I had to encounter a few trees here and there, the storm became more and more visible, despite becoming smaller and weakening. Just the contrast made it more photogenic than it even was before. So a classic storm chase in Kansas watching this tornado churn over a field. It was slowly weakening and becoming smaller in size, signaling that this storm chase was almost over. But the storm finally roped out, and that was the end of the chase. But this was definitely my best chase of the year, my favorite storm chase in the state of Kansas. And I hope you enjoyed watching. If you haven't seen it, I have a whole list of my top 10 storm chases of 2015. Please watch them, give me feedback, and let me know what you think.